So there may be no better way uh, to spoil a Thanksgiving meal like politics, like bringing up the presidential race. More than six in 10 Americans say they are hoping to avoid discussions of politics with friends and family. On Thursday, just 29% say they are actually looking forward to discussing politics, which I really want to know where those people live. Let's bring in White House columnist for The Hill, Niall Stanage. Uh, good morning, Niall. You and I talk about things that obviously you could see multiple perspectives on. But is the overwhelming idea that all of us need to just keep our lips shut when it comes to politics this year? I don't know if we need to keep our lips shut or if we just need to listen respectfully to other views. I mean, this is a really fascinating discussion that we could have for a long time, but is the problem differences of opinion or is the problem that people don't feel those differences of opinion are respected or heard? I know that some people just don't want to talk about politics and of course that's fine, but is the real danger that resentments build up if people feel their opinions are kind of cast aside or even if they're judged somehow as, as bad people if their views differ from the people they're having Thanksgiving dinner or any other kind of uh, social interaction with. Well, and it, through the end of the year, we're going to gather with more friends, we're going to gather with more family, and this situation in Israel is going to continue. Uh, whether or not there's a ceasefire soon for those hostages, we know that there is going to be a change in the Middle East to what happens in Gaza, particularly. Uh, Israel will make sure of that. But I think I, I want to know from you, you know, bipartisan agreement, really, uh, in terms of keeping off the table, the politics. At the same time, this Israel-Hamas conflict seems to be a red line. You know, we've, we've, we've had a lot of controversial topics brought up in the media, on social media, around the dinner tables. But do you think that with this Israel-Hamas war, we've reached a point in society where people will be on one side of history or the other? I think with Israel and Hamas and the Palestinians, it is a different category for a lot of reasons. Firstly, it is plainly a matter of life and death. Secondly, the accusations that get flung around in discussing that conflict are so extreme, you know, supporting genocide or wanting to eliminate a race of people. That kind of language, I think, does make it more difficult. I also think to this point, Adrian, there is a, a really important point which goes for political discussion generally, but is particularly relevant here. Oftentimes, anger kind of comes from a place of fear or woundedness or insecurity. And I think there are fears on both the Israeli and the Palestinian side that are legitimate fears that each side feels is not heard. And so there's this enormous amount of anger and resentment around that that makes it a particularly difficult issue. One of my uh, followers on Twitter slash X, whatever we call it now, uh, it actually tweeted me when I asked about this uh, last night. John said, our rule, no pie for anyone who talks politics at Thanksgiving. We talk about our lives, our passion projects, our pets. Nobody wants to miss that homemade pie. Uh, I think that giving an incentive is nice and all, but I found that at this particular time in history, you have to, and, and especially with younger people, you have to stand for what you believe in and take people's criticism in a way that seems to have not been seen in generations. Would you agree? I would agree. I mean, perhaps we should just say one of the reasons we're having this discussion is we had a, a different perspective yesterday when we were talking about Israel and the Palestinians. And you and I talked afterwards about being respectful towards each other, which we are, at least in my opinion, and feeling of course heard we by are. each other. <laughs> we are. All right. Well, I just didn't want to speak for you. You could, but, in that case. Okay. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So, listen, I appreciate the respectfulness of these discussions and the fact that on occasions when we do have different perspectives, there's no personal attack involved, right? We hear each other out and discuss our views. That way of discussing differences seems to me to be rarer than it should be. And to your point, among younger people particularly, seems to have grown very rare and there seems to be a lot of rushing to uh, assume that a difference of an opinion is a personal attack. Well, there's thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.